Hi, I'm Paul Askew from the Art School Restaurant and the Art School Cellars, and now the recently opened Emporium. Tell us what life has been like for you during lockdown, Paul. Obviously, it's been tough, tough for hospitality um, in general. You've kind of been a figurehead for, for the city. How's the past few months been? Well, I think that you know the past few months in terms of the hospitality sector. I think, as most people have seen, we were the, the first to be closed down, and you know one of the last ones to be reopened. Um, I think the the stress of, of businesses like this, because we're so emotionally entwined with what we do, and it's our life's work. It's not just about the pound, shillings, and pence. It's it's genuinely about looking after people, doing a great job, making a product that you can be proud of. And showing the city off in its best light, and that, you know, when when that's compromised, and when the the revenue turns off like a tap, it, it's a very very stressful thing. And I, I must admit, the day we had to close on the 20th of March, um, I, I I could have easily burst into tears, and I just sort of went home and went into a bit of a decline, um, quite depressed actually for a while. And then you start to come to terms with what you actually got to get hold of in terms of the financials looking after the staff well-being, getting them on furlough, all these things that we've all been through. And I think, you know, it, it's just so lovely to feel the relief of that announcement last night, just to say, yes, it is the fourth. Yes, it is one metre, which is enormous for the industry, um, in not, not just financially, but, but also in terms of operating and the welfare, again, of the, of the staff and the guests. Um, so it's been a roller coaster, but I think what I've tried to do is just galvanise everybody, get them working together, um, the collaboration in the city has been unbelievable, uh, whether that's been with the City Council through Joe and Tony Reeves, uh, but also with people like Bill Addy, Chris Brown, uh, my own colleagues at the LHA, Stephen uh, Hesketh and Marcus McGee, um, all been exceptional and we've just we've just all really got together um, and, and told told the truth and, and told the harsh reality of what, what, what was needed and I think, um, you know, hopefully out of it will come something better and stronger and, and, and more you know more galvanized for the future so yeah Liverpool it, it seems like the past couple of days and over the past few weeks Paul that Liverpool has, has kind of been the one that a lot of news outlets are focused on because of this great proactive approach that we've had in the city um, we are kind of leading the way in terms of how we're coming out of lockdown aren't we yeah well I think you know the, the collaboration that we've just touched on um, in the first part of what I said is is incredibly strong and I think the, the the great thing particularly about the City Council has been their speed to react and the way they've listened to the problems that have cropped up um, and it, it's it's the first time I can think of in a, in a very long time where when we've spoken and we've debated and it's been hard you know there's been lots of hard decisions but the reaction and the the ability to translate what we're what we're really asking them to do in, in, in a very short space of time has been incredible so Liverpool I would say has probably been the first city to send their recovery plan to government um, obviously the without walls initiative uh, shines through I think we're probably the first council to formally go to central government and ask for, for more funding um, and that will be the making of Liverpool you know I think even Manchester are looking over the shoulders thinking God how, the, how they've done that so quickly and it's definitely down to the collaboration and the people who have stood side by side and, and have wanted to get the city back on its feet and, and now you know hopefully we're going to see the benefit of that and long may it continue is what I say to that as well. Uh, a lot of restaurants, a lot of bar owners really excited to get back open, Paul, but, but also nervousness is there is there as well in terms of these new measures. Yeah. What advice would you give as someone who's been doing this a long time for anyone who's got a small restaurant maybe? What would you say to them right now about next week? I think you're right, the, the excitement about getting reopened now is, is phenomenal and I think some people like me will want to be open on the 4th, ready to go, fix bayonets, you know, here we go, um, which has always been my approach. I think the, the sooner, you know, the advice I would give is the sooner you get into your own business and learn how to operate with the new guidelines, and they are just guidelines, by the way, I need to stress that, because a lot of people think that if, you know, the people are going to have the tape measures out measuring a metre between tables or metre plus or whatever the, the, the terminology is, but, but they are genuinely guidelines, and it's about common sense, and we need... You know, we need our guests to have common sense. We need our staff to use common sense. We need to continuously uh, be washing and all the other things. But, but do you know what? The the innovation and the and the sort of determination that exists in our city and in our businesses, I think you will see people adapt to it very quickly. Um, and certainly for small restaurateurs, I think it's going to be 
very tough and very confusing initially. But as I say, the, the quicker we press the start button and we get in and start logistically looking at each bit of the guidance, I think the sooner you feel more relaxed and the sooner the you know customers feel confident coming back to you. And it's just that gentle process, but we have to press start. We have to get moving is what I would say. And, and for the customers, Paul, you, you again, excited, but, but nervous, you know, about, about coming back to restaurants and bars. What, what would you say to them? Because there are some fantastic measures in, in place. There are. I think if I was going to give a shout out to, to guests uh, returning to the city, returning to the bars and restaurants and hotels, I would say that, you know, the professionalism that exists in our hospitality sector in this city is second to none. You know, we, we take it very, very seriously. The guidelines will be implemented. You know, the cleaning regimes that are going on behind the scenes are off the scale. It's good. In fact, we're going above and beyond those uh, guidelines. And, and, you know, by definition, what hospitality does is we look to go the extra mile and this will be no different. So I think my, my shout out would be give it a try. Don't, don't be sitting at home being worried um, that things aren't going to be followed and aren't going to be adhered to because they will. Um, obviously, you have to trust the restaurant and bar that you're going to, but um, I think you'll be quite surprised and quite refreshed to see that you know we'll try and make it as normal and as comfortable as possible, even though we might be wearing a visor or gloves for certain delivery of food or drinks. Um, but but we will make it as comfortable and as normal as possible. And I, I would definitely say, you know, support your local bars and restaurants, and uh, let's try and get this show on the road, as I keep saying to people. Okay. Uh, the past few months, we've seen some incredible, creative, innovative, as you just said, ideas come out of Liverpool, and I've spoke to you about a few of them. And I know you've been. But some of the things we have seen, you know, the mobile bar coming out of the doghouse, for instance, Lids launching. We we'll touch on what you've launched in yeah, just a second. Sure, sure. It must be great to see these ideas coming from from small businesses in the city. It, well, it's fabulous. As I mean, it, Liverpool's known for its its independence and its edginess and its innovation and and wherever let's be honest we, wherever there's adversity scousers always come out of it well don't they you know we're, we're very sort of uh you know collaborative we're very sort of we do it with a smile on our face uh, and maybe that's because we you know before capital of culture we've probably been in a 30-year recession haven't we so so i think we got used to it and 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 the thing is we, we tell a joke about it and we, do, we don't we don't dwell on it we don't get depressed about it hopefully i know that's a, a difficult thing the mental health side but but in general the spirit of this has been about okay well this is what it is we're going to roll with the punches um look at how we can deliver local produce look at how can, we can look after vulnerable people look how we can keep our staff employed and diversify and do deliveries, do takeouts, um, do drop-offs, do click and collect, um, whatever it may be. And I think uh, we were just chatting before we did the interview and I think what, what it does is it, te it maybe teaches us how we should have been working in the first place. And, and sometimes that's a good thing. I know that this, I'm not gonna say for one minute that this has been a lovely experience. It hasn't and it's, it's a terrible thing that's happened. But in some ways, something good has to come out of this. And I do think that it will make us stronger moving forward. So. Okay, um, and behind us is something that you've just launched, uh, which is doing really well. It's only a week old now, <laughs> yeah. and I've, you know I've seen customers come coming through. There's a great system in place. Tell us about the Emporium at the Art School. Yeah, so we, we well, just as we were chatting away, that the, I think diversifying is is the sort of the new norm. It's part of what restaurants and bars are having coming to do. So we decided that we buy a lot of fantastic gourmet products. We buy wines direct from Italy. We buy. Um, you know, vinegars from Spain, charcuterie, uh, great artisan cheeses from all over the country. Uh, and of course, we make a few nice things ourselves here as well. And um, what we decided to do is that we start to, to build up our own repertoire of, of retail, if you like, um, and start selling people things that we're known for in the art school. I mean, some people ask us for the, the truffle honey that we have or the, the, the butter that we use on the table, the Jersey butter or our home-baked bread or, or the wine that they've just had. They want to buy them to take them home. And this was happening before the restaurant closed. So I thought, well, you know, why don't we give them the opportunity to do that? And whether that's through delivery or popping into the shop, uh, which is now open 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. every day, Tuesday to Saturday, um, but also it'll be open in the evenings when the restaurant reopens because again people will, will have something in the restaurant and come and go oh I'd quite like a bottle of that to take home or I'd quite like a book or an apron or a little memento from being at the art school so it's been amazing for us we did a great Father's Day uh, package over the weekend must have done 40-50 boxes in our first weekend of trying so that was really encouraging and I'm very grateful for 
people who, who indulge in that. So now we'll be launching a few little other deliveries like barbecue boxes, um, maybe an afternoon tea box once a month, maybe even a Sunday lunch box once a month. And, it, and it's all about just keeping the staff working and making sure that I'm not having to make people redundant. That's what this is about. It's not about, I think I'm going to be a millionaire by doing it. It's about survival and you know consolidation but doing something that's really lovely at the same time okay from the fourth year you're open for bookings you were telling me it's, it's you know selling fast in terms of booking tables um what measures are in place how excited are you are you yeah. nervous <laughs> build up to the fourth of july for us yeah so obviously after the announcement of fourth of july we we you know we're, we were elated i'll be honest it was like a big a big relief that it's actually being said right we are opening we can go for it um, so what we've done is obviously we've reduced the number of tables in the art school to allow for the distancing. Um, we're going to install some uh, sanitised stations so that wherever you walk through there's always somewhere where you can just do your hands and, and, and get a little wash on the way through. The staff will be in visors, they have to do their hand change every 20 minutes. Uh, we're using disposable menus so that it's just used once and then it doesn't go to another table. It's uh, removed. There's all these sort of measures in place and the cleaning regime has gone through the roof as you can imagine so we, we were, I, I like to think we were pretty good in the first place but now we've gone, you know, it'll be like a cleaner than a hospital I think will be by the end of this um, which is wonderful and I think the exciting thing for me is it's given me a chance to review all the menus obviously there's a few issues with supply chain um, we're, we're very known for our seasonal local produce so I'm just re-engaging now with all our suppliers to see what I can put on the menu and we've had staff coming back in to look at, uh, you know, new dishes and just gently building up. So we've got about another 10 days or so to go. Um, but no, it's so exciting and I, I just can't wait to, to welcome people back. Obviously, we've had to look at opening times. So we're just going to do four days a week, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Sunday's a new thing for us. We never used to open on a Sunday. But I think in the current climate, it's important that we, we, we open on that day now. And then I'm controlling the number of staff hours and the furlough scenario by just controlling number of days worked and number of hours worked um, and we'll be working in teams so that there's no crossover between lunchtime and dinner all these things it's so complicated but at the same time it's really exciting uh, and if I'm if I'm honest I just can't wait to see people back sat in the restaurants and, and having a good time